Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be exporting a lens flare out of After Effects into a track mat transition that we can use in Premiere Pro. Now this is a fairly simple straightforward process and honestly in most cases it's going to be easier just to do the lens flare in After Effects but if you need a transition that you want to use over and over and over again and not have to bring everything into After Effects and then you know render it out from there every time you want to use it then this is a good option for you and how it works is we need to export out two layers one will be the lens flare moving across the screen the other will be a black and white mat in order to facilitate the transition so let's start with a brand new solid so let's go to layer new solid we'll call this flare and let's make it black okay and then let's grab another solid and we'll call this mat and put the mat down at the bottom now on the flare let's add the lens flare so just go to the effects and presets grab the lens flare stick it on there and well I actually like this 105 millimeter prime that's of the default lens flare that's my favorite so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it kind of diagonally across so let's start up in this top corner. I want to keyframe the flare center and the flare brightness. Let's go forward a few frames and bring it all the way down to that corner. Now I'm going to hit, make sure my layer is selected, hit U on the keyboard and it brings up my keyframes. So I'm going to go to the beginning. Page up and page down will bring you through the layers, the, the frames individually. And so I'm going to go forward two frames and that flare brightness I'm gonna move that keyframe there then I'm gonna copy it and go two frames from the end and paste it there then at the beginning and ending I'm going to bring that down to zero and then right in the middle let's brighten that up a little bit so then what we have here is maybe even brighten that up even more now let's go ahead and easy easy so I'm gonna highlight all of those keyframes right click on them go down to keyframe assistant easy ease or you can hit F9 as well so I'm gonna go ahead and delete actually the other brightness I just want it to be from 0 to 140 to 0 and then what I'm going to do is let's go into the curve editor and I'm going to bring it so it's the curve is more sharper towards the beginning and ending and then let's go back away from the curve editor and I'm going to take these keyframes and move them one out that looks pretty good alright so there is just my basic flare now what we need to do next is we need to knock out this black and I can't just use like an extract or a luma key filter to do that because it's going to look funny. Let me show you what happens. So if I let's just hide this background matte layer and let's add the extract filter. And when I knock that, see how it it, it just doesn't it doesn't work right. You, you know I can even soften it, and it's just it's not going to look how I want it to look. If I try to composite this on top of some other footage, it's going to look really bad. So I need a filter a plugin that will just knock out the black but leave everything else and there's one that does that well there's actually a couple I think Red Giant has one uh, the one I'm using is by Video Copilot and it's called VC Color Vibrance and it adds color to things and I actually don't want to add the color to things so I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is down here under Vibrance set that to zero it brings it back to normal and then it has this option down here that says matte alpha and I turn that on and what that's doing is it's taking everything that's black and making it transparent as if I had used the the screen mode in the transfer mode but you can't export out with a screen mode so that's why you need to have a plugin that'll do this so now I have just the lens flare and that one's ready to export before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and also make the transfer the track mat so let's turn this on and what I'm gonna add to this is go to layer layer styles and let's add a gradient overlay and I like this because it's easy to change directions and angles and things like that so down here we have actual the angle so I want it so it starts white and ends black let's bring the scale down 
and the scale in this is how much feather there is. About like that will do. And let's let's go in and so I can see my keyframes. So there's the center and that's where I want it to be in the center. Oh, I realize my flare is going top to bottom so I do need to switch this around because I want it to go white from black, white to black. Now we're going to keyframe the offset of this uh, gradient overlay. So keyframing there in the center where it's right in the center. Let's go to the beginning. Keyframe it right off. Go to the end and keyframe it off the other end. Let's see how that looks. Now it's not moving quite right because I have an easy ease on the other one. So what I'm going to do is delete the keyframe right in the middle. And then let's easy ease these keyframes. So highlight it, right click, and go to easy ease. That looks pretty good. So we've got two layers here. One is the flare, one is the track mat. And we need to export these out. I'm going to export out the flare first, and then I'll just come back and export the track mat. So I'll just do two different things. So first the flare, let's go to export, add to the render queue. And we need to do some special settings on this because we need to have the alpha the alpha uh, value to the layer. So if we click here where it says lossless, just click on the name lossless and bring this up and everything should be fine. What you want is you want it to set on the animation codec. So if I click on the format options, make sure it says animation there. And then under channels, switch to RGB plus alpha. And that's all you need to do and it will export with an alpha channel. And let's find a place for it. Give it a name. Let's render that out. Should be fairly quick. Now let's go back and render out just the track mat. Head to the render queue. And with this one, you don't need any special alpha transition, uh, alpha channel. So I'm just going to use an H.264. Give it a name and render it out. Now at this point, we're done in After Effects. So let's head over to Premiere Pro. And what I have is just a basic uh, timeline setup here where I have two shots, a truck, and a guy working on a car. So this is from a Ford dealership. So what I, would, I want to transition using that new transition I built. So let's bring those into Premiere Pro. I'm just going to drag and drop them into the project window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to cut that top layer, have it be separate, Let's bring in first the flare layer. Okay, that's looking good. I can go ahead and trim that down. And then the matte layer on top of that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is on this, the video layer, the one that I want to transition, I'm going to add an effect to it. If we go to video effects, keying, track matte key and I'm going to add that to that layer and then we go into the effects controls and here we can choose a matte and I'm going to choose video layer 4 because that's where my track matte layer is and then under composite switch it to matte luma and then what we have here is a nice lens flare transition and so what it's doing is this matte is actually just invisible now now that I've tied it to this track matte key you can't see it anymore and what it's doing is it's taking this flare and it's playing it across and at the same time if I hide this flare it is using that mat as a transition so with that in mind you can make all sorts of cool transitions it doesn't have to be just a wipe like that you can have things kind of noise fading on and on and dissolves and just really cool things that you can use over and over again in Premiere Pro so that is how to create your own track mat transition that you can use again and again in Premiere Pro. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do tutorials twice a week, sometimes even three times a week. So if you're wanting to learn After Effects quickly and on a regular basis, you'll want to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.